let's zoom in, get it nice and large. And I'm just going to go up the top and change that view to wireframe so we can see our axis, which we're going to be moving. Select it. Now, to move the axis, we use Move Tool, which is on the right hand. Up here, we have the uh, Tools selections, and we select the Shift Tool. Now, what with the Shift Tool, selecting the object changes the color into a translucent aqua. That's just to show it's a different type of tool we've got. Selecting it again, and holding Control, will allow us to move the axis instead of the object. And we do that by using this edit control. And you can see that by sliding it up, it goes up and down, it goes down. Now I'm gonna undo that because moved along the Z axis, we don't want that. We want it to stay central at this stage. So what we do, up the top here, and we see an X, Y, and Z button. If you click one of these buttons, it'll lock movement along that axis so we don't want any movement along the z-axis or the x-axis all we want to do is to constrain x and z we just want to be able to move up and down so that way we can be sure that we won't waver from the directly up and down movement the x and z-axis constrained we won't have any problem with any movement we'll press control and then hold down that pane and slowly move till it's exactly right. Now I'll just put our view back to the uh, single big screen view by going to view selection and then this dialog pops up and I'll just select that one. Going back to our 3D view see that the axis is now at the bottom. The base of our loo is sitting on the ground because its uh, position is at zero, which you can see here. We have a X position of 3.802 meters. The Y position is zero. The Z position is 7.43 meters. And sliding along the dimensions are still the same as we had them at 2 by 2 and 0.2 meters high. Now I've purposefully moved our view way out of whack. We're just looking at a silly angle now, it doesn't make any sense. And I'm, I'm using this view control, selection control down the bottom left hand corner here to move around. Now this might happen to you and it's it's not what you want to happen because you need to, when you're modeling an object for exporting to Microsoft Train Simulator you need to have your object pointing the right way and that is the standard viewpoint for the software to get to that view right click anywhere in the empty space choose look look at scene Put us into a, a view that has the z-axis going away from us and towards us the x-axis going from right to left and the y-axis going up and down which is the standard um, orientation for 3d canvas pro you, it's important to have the standard orientation because you've got to remember the uh, microsoft software the train simulator software is working with an object from nowhere. It doesn't have any history of how you built the object. It doesn't know what you were looking at when you built it. So you need to give it something that has a standardized uh, way of appearing. And that's what that's what this view is. It's, it's so that if you have a front door on your toilet, you can export it knowing that that front door will appear the way you uh, expect it to and that's not so important because you can always rotate the toilet around in the root editor but if you had a locomotive and it was pointing say this way when you export it into the game it will go along the track sideways it doesn't look very realistic it's it's not very useful 
and it also works the opposite. If you export something the wrong way, it'll drive backwards when you thought it was supposed to drive forwards. The wheels won't rotate the right way and it's not going to be very good at all. You tell the exporter some key points about your object when you export it and that's recorded within the file and then Train Simulator can uh, come along and work with those points and it will blindly use those points no matter what texturing you've used, no matter how many wheels your locomotive has. That's just something we'll, we'll have a look at that more in depth later on and that's another reason why it's important to get this axis in the right spot. It's uh, something we'll be doing a lot more of when we start exporting locomotives as well. Well that brings us to the end of the first part. Just a couple of things to recap. Um, we work with the three axes and that's X, red, that's from right to left, green is the Y axis and that represents up and down movement and Z which is uh, towards and away from on the blue axis. Now um, the other thing is to remember we can manipulate objects using this edit control down the bottom right here and to actually alter the scaling we use the dark triangular panel. The light triangular panel is used as a movement transform and uh, the actual axes themselves are used to rotate and um, though all those things are called transforms to use the correct terminology but there's a uh, scaling transform, movement transform and rotation transform. When we come back we'll be looking at, uh, we'll, we'll get a little bit further along with our building of the uh, outhouse and uh, we'll eventually export it but for now just have a play around with things, drag some primitives onto the stage or the scene whatever you want to call it and try scaling some things and try moving it and try adding more than one primitive and see what happens um, just play around with it